Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. Today I have another Divi tutorial. And this one is highly requested and it's about making the Divi blog module, all the posts in the module, equal height. So by default, they're not equal height. They're kind of just, you know, based on the title height or the excerpt or whatever, and they kind of flow almost a little bit like how a Pinterest board would. Um, but a lot of people want to make them equal. So I'm going to show you that and show you a couple extra things that we can do to that to make that really great. So let's take a look at how it looks by default. Here I have a simple example and I did a couple things on purpose. Like I kept the image off on this one and I made the excerpt a little longer and I made the title a little longer. And on this one, it's just kind of average. And then this one, again it's kind of average but i made the excerpt shorter my point was to show you that like see how there's different lengths you know the, the height i should say is different and it would be the same thing if we're having pagination on that's why i have this on here for the demo and you can even see here the first two are shorter than the third one um and so and i could have you know multiple rows here right i just have three you get the idea if it was if I didn't have it, it would they'd be stacking here, right? All right, so this is going to do a couple of things and it's actually an optional thing. I'm gonna make them all the same height, but I'm also going to give you the option to make the buttons align to the bottom. Some people like that, some people don't. So it's gonna be an option. So let's get to it. If you're watching this on YouTube, by all means, go to the blog post. That's where you should always go on all of my videos. It's linked in the description. So here we are on the blog post itself. Now, just to be totally transparent, we're, we modeled this after, a little bit after, um, a help article from Elegant Themes, and that is right here. So like in the, when you go to chat support, there's like the, you know, little chat box that comes up and they use a system called Intercom and, um, they have help docs in there that are kind of hidden in a way. But anyway, when you search for like equal height Divi blog module, you'll get this, all right? So this is kind of the go-to tutorial, or at least it was before mine, <laughs> um, but it has some limitations, it has a few flaws, and we're gonna improve on it. So I'm just saying all this to say, hey, you know, we, we kind of copied theirs to, in order to improve it and make it more accessible. I wanted to explain what it's doing and um, they don't do a very good job of that. So anyway, that is linked here if you wanna check that out, just giving them credit and all that. So the very first thing as usual, we wanna target just one particular blog module or maybe multiple blog modules, right? So we're going to add a CSS class and that is right here. You can go ahead and just copy that or we can write it PA blog equal height. We're gonna copy that then go to our website and paste it in our blog module. So right here, I'm just gonna enable the Divi Builder. And then this is how, this is basically what we're doing to target just this blog module. And then in the jQuery snippet, it's going to be matching this snippet, right? So go to the settings, advanced tab, CSS ID and classes. Hey, I already have it in there, but basically you just paste it there or write it out like that. That's exactly where it goes. And now we're all set for the next snippet. So you could, you know, you could save this page. In fact, we're actually done. Well, this is, you can add code different ways. Well, for now, we're let's say we're done here, right? So we can exit this. Now, nothing changed, of course. All we did was add the snippet in there. The next part of the tutorial is adding the jQuery. So like I was saying, there's different places you can add this. I'm going to add it into theme options in, in the website. You go to the back end, Divi theme options um, into the integration tab. Now I'm just warning you, this is a lot of code. Um, you can use this little copy button. Makes it really easy copy. You see a green check mark, right? And you can see I turned the line numbers on. Usually I have them off, but I have them on for a reason. That is because I want to explain the code there using line numbers. So anyway, go to the website, go to theme options, Divi theme options, click on the integration tab. Okay. And then here where it says add code to the head of your blog, 
we're going to go down here and if you have already have some code there it's fine just go below it and then just paste it control v and there you go it's all in there make sure we save the changes all right so now there is one other step that we should do right away before we move on and i'll and i'll explain it all um the css code so let's go ahead and do that copy that it's down below there now this goes in the general tab all right so same thing if, there, if you already have code there it's fine paste it down below there again we're going to be getting to this i just want it in there now so i can show you the entire you know effect here all right so you ready we're going to refresh the page now all our code is done we're, we're done with the tutorial <laughs> Um, I just need to explain some things. There it is. Now you can see that I have chosen to align the buttons to the bottom. You can see the gray box that I made it. And again, that's just custom. The button's custom. I have other tutorials for that. So don't don't worry like if you're like, hey, my blog doesn't look like that. But I, I just show that for example. We're worried more about you know the height and the button alignment right now. So you can see it's working. And then the question would be, well, is it working with pagination? Well, let's take a look. Let's click on the next page. And yes, it is. Now, it's not taking all of the blog modules and taking the height, the tallest one. It's only the ones that are in view. So in this particular case, I, I would assume that these are actually a little shorter than if I'm on page one. I don't know that for sure, but it, that would make sense. Um, these three, out of these three, it's taking the highest one and saying, hey, make them all that height, all right? And it would be the same thing on page two. So that's, now that we're starting to explain it, let's get into that. Uh, let's see. And, and by the way, if, if you don't even care, <laughs> um, just, you're done. <laughs> you're done. Give me a thumbs up if you felt this was a great tutorial. Um, uh, yeah, so... I'm going to try to explain it and um, as simply as possible. So uh, where's the best place to do this? I guess right here. It's hard because I've got to like scroll. But line one, you're going to see a thing here that says true. <laughs> okay, so basically that could be true or false where I have highlighted there. Uh, if it's true, i got to look at my notes here. If it's set to true then it's going to do the equal height and the align to bottom. And if it's set to false, well, then it's just going to um, do the equal height. So let's change it. I'm going to go in here to the integration tab. Where are we? Right, right here. I'm going to, I'm going to change this. It would be line three. Yeah. False. All right. Now I will go ahead and refresh the page. The height of the, I'm pointing on my screen here, the height of the, the gray, you know, each blog post is equalized and the buttons are, are not aligned. So there you go. That would be option two. So there's really two things, option one or two, whether the buttons are aligned bottom or not. So there you go. It was that easy. That is on line three of the code. The next lines, nine, uh, yeah, five to 71. So yeah, this is this is doing the work that you just saw, making the the grid height equal. It's looking, it's it's seeing what all is there, right? What elements? Like let's say like I had um, an image there, or I didn't have an image there, or is there an excerpt or not? And it's it's trying to figure out all of these things, and it's taking the height. And here you can kind of see it takes the height of all of them, and then let's let's say it like if we were doing it, we would make a list and write down all the heights. In pixels of all of them and then we'd say now which one's the tallest oh yeah that one there and then we'd say okay let's make all the other ones the same height as that and then it would be doing the same thing with the margin and the interesting thing about it is it's doing it instantly because if I'm here watch this if I change my screen size um, like right here see how it's updating instantly Every single time I move that a pixel or more, it's recalculating. It's really awesome. And that's uh, very important uh, to do that, that it's always being updated. The other thing that we're getting to here on these, this next section, um, a couple of these other sections actually, 
is just that we don't want this to happen on small screens. My point is we don't want there to be this big gapping space. If I'm like this, right? See how on, on a small screen they stack. Now this first one here would be a perfect example. We don't want this gray box to go way down here below it would go down you know and create a big gap there on mobile why would we want that it's really only when we're comparing uh you know side by side that we really notice it so in the code you're going to see things related to 768 pixels that's where tablet and phone switch so like right here you can see that it's um it's talking about that and then also this this last one here Basically, it's saying that we are we're not applying our effect on the smaller sizes, or we we're eliminating that effect by removing these classes, these two ones here, on smaller screens. Okay. Um. Yeah. And then the lines eighty five to one hundred. That's kind of doing what I was saying. Like we we change the screen size, or we change. Oh, there's no more excerpt anymore. We, we didn't have one. And all these little things, it's checking for it. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then the lines 102 to 136 are for the pagination. So you may not have realized that or not, but when you're when you're clicking on a like number two or three, etc., it's recalculating. It has to recalculate. We talked a little bit about that. That's what those lines are. And then this here is just uh, adding back in the code for the equal height, um, but we don't, yeah, it's, it's affecting the margin of the button. That's how it's being, being done. If I go here and set this back to true and refresh here, what I'm really doing is, what that's really doing is recalculating everything. It's calculating how much space it would need between the button and the excerpt. And then it's adding that amount of space as a margin on the top of a button. Okay. I know that's a little much to take in, but that's what, that's what it's doing. The CSS is kind of like a little bit of a helper. Uh, when those classes are in effect, um, we're basically, the, the margin is 20 pixels by default. Uh, and I, I'd have to even find where that's at in the code. I forget. It's in here somewhere. <laughs> um, there's going to be a 20 right here. It is 20. This value. What line are we on? It's hard to see because I have to scroll. And I don't know which one. Still didn't go over far enough. Okay. Uh, line around 60. Okay. If you happen to have a different value set for like your spacing, you're going to want to make sure that they all match. Like, let's say you wanted that to be 30. Like right here, this space right between the read more button and the excerpt here. If you wanted that to be more, just make sure you change it everywhere. So you'd want to change it at line 60 there. Um, and then also in the CSS. So I guess I should stop. I know most of you don't care about this, um, how it works. You just want it to work. I just wanted to go over it a little and I don't I don't mean to ramble like this so yeah go ahead and try to read it you know try to look at what it's doing it is this is a this is an advanced tutorial uh, this is definitely way more advanced than usual so sorry about that but also it's the best way to do it there are a couple snippets floating around the internet that are claiming to be better because they're shorter um, but unfortunately, they miss out on almost everything. When you resize the browser, they miss out on responsive things. They miss out on the Ajax. And yeah, there's just um, some some big gaps in the code that need to be taken care of, and including the Elegant Themes code. So um, yeah, I say this not to brag, but but our code right here is the best right now you know, on the internet, and that's there's some improvement that needs to be made but anytime you see people asking this you should be sharing this tutorial not the one from elegant themes because this is the better code and it's not about who has a better code it, it, i'm talking about the functionality has been thought through a little bit better
I'm sure more than likely someone asked them like, hey, how do I do this? And they were probably getting bugged about it. And some developer out of Elegant Themes was like, I'm just going to write it real quick. And, you know, and it works great except for a few things. So anyway, I'm not bashing anyone. If you did like this, please give me a thumbs up and comment. And also, like I said, be sure to um, share this when someone asks. Um, that would be great. All right, be subscribed. Usually my tutorials are not this complicated. And yeah, this is what you'll get here on the channel. So we'll see you all in the next video.